Hey guys, Savage Al here. Today we are going to do a complete beginner guide for Sovo S306 from Assemble, Bed Leveling, Calibration, and Size Assembly. We are also going to dig into some of the detail of each steps, cover some of the common known issues, and provide a solution for it. And I'd like to thank Sovo to sending me this machine. I was lucky enough back to New Year when they do the giveaway event on the Facebook and I won the prize. So here we are, we can do some interesting things with this machine. The simple bed leveling and basic calibration tutorial video was planned to come after every single printer reviews. I hope this video will help you as a beginner to be less frustration during the learning process. Hopefully you will get success print on the first try. With that being said, let's get started. I'd like to provide a part checking list in the beginning. So you are supposed to have those parts come with the printer right out of the box. Next, I'd like to just mention some of the key points before you start assembling the printer. So you will be aware of some of the common known issue. Checking list number one, bearing. My first unit of SV06 has one of the common found issues from the first production patch, dry and noisy bearing. I made a tutorial video on how to lubricate your bearing. If you have noisy bearing, take it as a reference. The bearing is a lot more quieter after lubrication. Link is attached on the description. I also personally consider lubricate the bearing as one of the necessary maintenance to do with this printer. Checking list number two, bed spacer. Bed leveling is another common known issue for the first production patch. Some are due to the firmware issue, some are due to the solid bed spacer are in different height. That is something you need to be aware, but we are going to just leave it here for now. If there is issue later, we can always take a spacer out and check it high for it. Checking list number 3, Top Block. Sovo SV06 has all of the align feature. However, I have seen some people have an issue with their unit appears to be unlevel Z axis after all of Z align. If the stopper on the top block is not aligned correctly during assemble, it will happen. Now let's get started with a symbol. The symbol process may take somewhere from 10 to 15 minutes. You don't need any extra tool to complete this process. So we we'll had to provide accessories to get this job done. Notice that all the bolts are labeled in steps. We are going to follow this sequence to finish our symbol. Step 1. Merit gantry to the base. For traditional i3 structure 3D printer, the gantry is located on top of the base. We need to make sure the gantry is aligned with the base in 90 degrees from both side, front, and back directions. Sovo S306 comes with a little different in structure. The gantry is attached on the side of the base. There are also machined slots to make life easier, but it is still better if we can check alignment during assemble. Now we know everything looks what it's supposed to be, we can continue to tie the bolt all the way in. Step 2. Attach power supply unit. Before we start bolts anything on, make sure you adjust the power setting according to your location. As I am in the US, voltage must be switched to 115 volts. It is easier to insert one bolt as a guide and then attach a PSU on the correct location. Step 3. Extruder on carrier. Extruder does not have anything temporary to hold on the carrier. You must be use one hand to hold it and use another hand to feed the bolt in place. 
Now be careful, don't drop your extruder symbol. Step 4. Filament holder. Make sure you got orientation of the filament holder correctly and pull the bolts on. Step 5. Main bolt housing. Main bolt housing is located on the right side and behind the gantry. This design is very nice to use. I like it a lot. Step 6. LCD screen. Now we can attach an LCD screen in these two bolts. Step 7. Connecting all the cables. Connecting all the cables as shown. Pay attention LCD screen cable must connect to the EXP3 as shown. Each wire will have a label on it. Make sure you connect the correct one. Plug-in power connector cable. Pay attention again. Make sure your voltage setting is correctly. Power on. Everything looks functional properly. Let's power it off and start a calibration process. The basic calibration is the key to the first success spring. Make sure you follow all the procedures in sequence and don't skip anything. Step 1. Bell Tensioner The tension belt must adjust to the proper level. To loose bell will lead to layer shift and print fail. Too tight belt may increase the load on the step motor and cause overheat and wear much faster. Let's start with the belt under the bed. It is Y-axis tensioner belt. Use your finger to feel tension after each adjustment. Also move the bed back and forth to see if it moves smoothly. Bed should move smoothly without big resistance, and you should not feel any empty step during the movement. Pay attention not to move too fast. The motion mode of the motor is charging the printer. Rapidly moving fast may cause electrical component damage. The bed heater cable should be moved freely without tangle. It should be also stay out of way of this cover. Now let's repeat same procedure on the x-axis. Step 2. Align Z-axis. Turn the printer on, select bed leveling, ALU Z align. Printer will start upward motion until it hits top stopper on the both side of the top block. The grinding sound like this is normal. Printer will automatically bring the extruder back to the homing position. Step 3. Auto Home. Select bed leveling, Auto Home. This feature requires heating out a printer bed for sensor to get a more accurate home position. Your said printer does not have a limit switch at the end stop. Instead, it has a feature called sensorless homing. The motor driver was sensing the bump motion and telling the process it is a right spot. You will hear a little grinding like this. If you have anything grinding more than this, you can change the sensitive level of the sensor's homing. Go to the main menu and select Configuration, Advanced Setting, TMC Driver, Sensor's Homing. The future default set value at 64 or 65. Increase this value will reduce the grinding time. I set mine at 75 and it gets very good result. Step 4. Bed Leveling. Now we could select bed leveling, Pro Z offset. While the printer bed is still in the healing condition, make sure you don't put your fingers on the printer bed. Take a piece of paper and place under the nozzle. Rotate the knob counterclockwise to bring the nozzle closer to the printer bed. Continue rotate the knob as you are moving the paper back and forth. You should start feeling friction from the nozzle. 
We want the feel of a nozzle retainer paper, but you could still move the paper around with some light pulling force. The normal Z offset value should be somewhere between negative 1.5 to negative 2.0. There will be an assumption. The value just for you as a reference, in my case, the value is around 1.876. Pay attention to select store selling before you do anything else. The machine will tell you, okay, and it sounds like this. Now let's select level bed. The sensor will first heating and then it will start poking of oh, probe 25 point and add compensate to overcome the imperfection on the build plate. Since there is nearly impossible to get a perfect flat condition without any deviation on the build plate. As mentioned earlier, there is one commonly known issue for the bed leveling feature. There may be caused by the framework, as many people had reported this compensate value was not able to compile by the main board. There are some group members have provided a solution on update the framework to manually add the compensate value on it. Sovo had mentioned that their engineer are working on this problem. So if you have this issue, you can try the framework from Facebook group to fix this problem or just wait for Sovo to update it. Or most likely you will not have this issue like my first printer. Also, if you are trying to print something big, you may feel the left side of the print bed is higher than the right side, which my first unit had this problem. The problem could be caused by the bed spacer. It's not at the same height. You could simply check it out by taking the bed off, as I mentioned on the pre-assembled checklist. I designed a tool that you could use to check if x-axis is aligned correctly. Z-axis. Sorry, not X. Simply place this tool from behind until the nose against a linear rod. Eyeball it, confirm a gap, and take a piece of paper to check the gap. You should feel the same type of resistance from the both sides. If you don't have this tool, you can use something that is identical height to do this. If you have a problem with auto Z align function every single time, take the top block off and make sure the bolt down all the way. If a, if a stopper on the top block is not aligned, you will never get a good result with this feature. Now it's time to get slicer setting. Sovo has provide slicer on the SD card come with the printer, but I always like to use a Prusa slicer. So let's get started with it. Since the SV06 has a similar mechanical structure to the Prusa MK3S, we can simply use the MK3S file and change the restriction setting according to the instruction paper provided by Sovo. I have also attached my printer files in the description. If you don't like to mess around with it, you can just download it. Import instructions are also on the printable link. Now, I don't think it's necessary to do the bed leveling every single time before the printing, but if you like it, you can simply add G29 on the starting G code, which it will tell the machine, hey, do this before you start your work. But if you are switching to a different type of filament that requires different bed temperature or nozzle temperature, it is better to do it. Before start printing anything, I like to use this calibration print to test the bed leveling. It is designed to have a four square piece on the four corner of the printer bed. This print will able to verify the four corner leveling. Now back to the printer. Let's use IPA alcohol to clean the printer bed. It is recommended to clean a printer bed before you start a print. It will remove the debris and the oil from the surface to give a better adhesion. Let's preheat the printer and insert a filament. Due to the gear set design on this extruder, 
It is easier to bend a filament straight before you start inserting it. I also to like start with a PLA since it is one of the most easiest filament to work with. Now let's print in the back calibration with language slide. During the printing, we can also check the ZX coupler on the side to see if the bed leveling is actually working properly. Simply put a mark on the coupler and observe the motion. Now the coupler should have doing something during this kind of movement around four corners. After a few minutes of print, now let's check it out. Now as you can see, this full square block on the left and right looks a little differently. The left side it looks the nozzle is a bit too close to the printer bed. In the other hand, the right side looks the nozzle is a bit too far away from the printer bed. And the center one just perfect adhesion. Now we know there's a problem. And that could be big due to the best spacer or due to the framework, as I mentioned earlier. So the center part adhesion looks okay, which just means if I don't print anything big, it should be fine. Now we can go back to do something with the back spacer or do something with the framework to add a manual composite. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it as it. But if you are a beginner, I'll suggest you to do those calibration later. Now I think the biggest reward for 3D printing is after you assemble and do the basic calibration. The excitement of the first success print right out of the box, which I am a very lazy person, so some of the temperature tower retraction selling e-step, as I mentioned, um, I haven't get it done for most of my printings. But, you know, it works. It is also worth to mention that filament property, or you can call it behavior, are different from type to type, brand to brand, and even across in different products. So the temperature tower, retraction tower, may need to be tested by each time you switch filament. Which again, I never done it, so maybe you should do it. Tips for printing different filament with SV06. I print with more than 10 different types of PLA and PNG without any issues. But if you are trying to print some flexible filament like TPU, pay attention when you're inserting a filament. Make sure the filament is all the way from the gear set to the holes. Also pay attention to the g-code on your slicer. If you are printing a model with a lot of retraction, the retraction setting must be too reduced. Again, the starting g-code for the perch line, E value should not be over 15. If you are printing ABS, ASA, polycarbonate, make sure to reduce some of the Z offset value before you start your printing. These filaments are not like to stay on the printer bed in nature. They are hard to print without enclosure too. Now, this should cover most of the detail of found the issue of this printer. If you like my video, please consider subscribe and hit the like button. Your support is the reason I make the video like this. Good luck and happy printing. I'll see you next time.